In this video, what I'd like to do is provide an interpretation of the, of the tensor sigma that appears in Cauchy's theorem. And what I want to show you is that it has all the properties that we would expect of a stress tensor, namely that it represents force per unit area in different directions, say normal forces per unit area and uh, tangential forces per unit area, which are sometimes called sh shear stresses, so normal stresses and shear stresses. So let's first recall uh, the definition of sigma. So we had this construction, and that produced a definition for sigma, which said that it was T acting on EI, outer product EI. So that was the, the relationship that we had for sigma. And let's go ahead and recall uh, two other facts about this. Uh, one was that this then meant that sigma acting on the normal was equal to the traction on the surface with that normal and also that the divergence of this tensor sigma plus the body force is equal to rho times the acceleration. So those were things that we learned in the proof of Cauchy's theorem. Now let's look at the components of sigma. So let's look at the 1, 1 component first. So if I want the component of a tensor, the 1, 1 component, I'll apply the tensor to the unit vectors that are associated with those components, so E1 and E1. So sigma acting on E1, uh, according to Cauchy's law here, is going to give me T acting on E1, and then I have to dot it with, with E1 here. So it's simply the one component of the traction on the surface whose orientation is in the one direction. So if I look at my body here and set up my coordinate axis so one is pointing to the right, I can make a section cut through a point of interest with the normal in the one direction. And on that surface will be a traction vector t, pointing in some direction. And if I project it down into the one direction, I'm going to get the normal force per unit area on the section cut, whose normal is equal to E1. And that's what is sigma 1, 1. So, and that corresponds to our understanding of a normal stress on a surface, which is the, the normal force per unit area on that surface. If I look at the 2, 1 component, to get the 2, 1 component, I'm going to apply sigma to the vector E1, and then I'm going to take its dot product with E2. So that's nothing but E2 dotted with the traction on that surface. So in my construction over here, that's going to be the vertical part of this uh, projection here. So sigma 2, 1 is the two-direction shear force per unit area on the section cut with normal E1. So that's what we would consider the shear force in the two-direction on that surface. The general result that we have here is that any component, sigma ij, is equal to the force per unit area in the i direction on the surface with normal in the j direction. So. The conventional way of drawing this is we draw a cube, and then on each face of the cube, thinking of the one axis going in this direction, the two axis in the vertical direction, and the three axis coming out at us. So we would have the three normal stresses, sigma 1, 1, 2, 2, and 3, 3. So those are our 1, 1, 2, 2, and 3, 3 components of the tensor sigma that appears in Cauchy's theorem. And then we can have shears. We can the vertical shear on the one face was sigma 2, 1, and the horizontal shear on the two face is sigma 1, 2. We also have shears in the three directions, so sigma 3, 1 and sigma 3, 2. And then we have two shears on the three face, sigma 2, 3 and sigma 1, 3. And so each component of the stress tensor, each sigma ij, corresponds to a force per unit area in the direction associated with the first index on a surface whose normal is in the direction associated with the second index. So the second index is the section cut that we're looking at, and the first index is the force direction. So we can see now that the tensor sigma that appears in Cauchy's theorem is rightly or correctly interpreted as the stress tensor that we normally see in mechanical theories.